at the, at the regulatory perspective, first of all, on capital, which of course I'm sure you all know is corrective and preventive uh, activities. We're going to start with 21 CFR Part 820, where subpart J is entirely devoted to capital. So here's a quotation uh, from the regulation. Um, I generally don't like to read my slides, but since this is a quotation from the regulation, I think it's important enough that we go over it and look at the words carefully. So capital processes shall include identifying and investigating existing and potential causes of quality problems. There's a lot of important information in that one little bullet. First of all, the and here, identifying and investigating. It's not good enough just to identify the problems, but investigating them is certainly the next step that we need to take to be able to understand prevention, which is the second part of capital. Another thing to look at in this quote is existing and potential. Now we always fix existing problems. We have to. They come up, we have to fix them. How much time do we spend on preventing potential problems? Probably not as much as we spend on correcting existing problems. So it's important if you take something away today to take away a new mindset for your company of being in the, in, the, in the mode of preventing problems, not detecting and correcting them, but preventing them when they are potential problems before they become real problems. Take it from me, correcting a potential problem is much easier than correcting a actual problem. You have much less uh, paperwork to deal with, much less activity involved. The final point I want to make about this phrase it's not that we're dealing with quality problems, but we're dealing with causes of quality problems. Sure, the quality problem is one thing, but what caused it? That's what we want to get at. We don't want to treat the symptoms, which are the problems. We want to treat the disease, which are the causes of quality problems. What kind of examples of causes of quality problems have you seen in your career in your companies? Anyone? Particulates. Particulates causing contamination. Very good. So you don't want to don't want to deal with the with the with the problem of the contamination. You want to deal with the entrance of particulates. How about lack of training? Operator error. What else? What a uh, limit set like uh, limit set for specification and stuff. Mm -hmm. In the proper limits. How about poor procedures? Okay, so you don't you don't fix the person who made the problem, you fix the procedure that they were following. So that's that's important here, is to think about the causes of quality problems. Moving on, uh, cap processes shall also include identifying the actions needed to correct correct and prevent recurrence of quality problems. Now this is again, this is important. Prevent recurrence. I was talking to someone in my company about CAFA. Um, I think they were probably um, hadn't attended a conference on CAFA. They said, well, how can you prevent a problem when it's already happened? They didn't quite understand that because the problem had already happened here, there was still the potential for it to happen over in this plant, or this plant where the same product is manufactured. Or this warehouse, where the same system is used for uh, storing and, and distributing product, is being able to prevent recurrence. Make a mistake once, you correct it, don't want to see that mistake happen again. That becomes a systemic problem and an issue for investigators to look a little deeply and see what's wrong here. Capital processes also shall include verifying that corrective actions are effective. I'm sure we all have that as part of our capital processes, verifying that the effectivity of the capital that it actually did what you thought you were going to do. Um, it would be um, it would be terrible to invest all that time and money in executing a capital, and in the end, well, it wasn't effective. It didn't really correct the problem, but it does happen. So it's important that you have that part in your capital process to make sure that what you did, did what you thought it was going to do, that it did fix the problem. 
Capital processes will also include implementing changes in procedures, obviously. Uh, a lot of root causes are procedures. Disseminating information about quality problems. Now this is important. This is something that a company I worked for a few years ago did very well. Uh, whenever there was a product investigation report, or a CAPA, or a complaint, and the root cause was identified, a very um, large communication, a widespread communication, went out to all the relevant plants that could be affected by this to let them know what had happened and what the investigation showed as a result. So this communication is important. It is required by the quality system regulation. You've got to disseminate information. In a way, a lot of companies are hesitant to do this because it's kind of like airing your dirty laundry. You know, oh gee, you know, we really uh, screwed up here um, and we're not very proud of it. Um, but we have a regulatory obligation to tell other people in this company who may, know, may need to know about this what happened and what we did about it. And finally, uh, the last part of the um, regulation on CAPA talks about submitting this information for management review. Very important that the executive team of your company gets a look at CAPAs and trends in CAPAs so that they can take company-wide action if they need to to fix systemic problems. As you know, if you read 21 CFR Part 820, management has the ultimate responsibility and authority for quality in a company. If someone's going to go to, go to, go to jail, it's going to be the CEO. Maybe that's actually a good thing in some cases. Um, but management has the ultimate responsibility. So management needs to have this information so they can review it on a regular basis and look for information. So that's the um, quality system regulation on CAPA.